Hey there everyone, it's Natalie here and today I'm going to be creating a, uh, a little art journal page in my junk journal. So I'm going to be creating um, some a page using Lindy's. Um, I've got a bit of an idea on what I want to do and I just thought I would talk you through the process. So this is my junk journal. Um, it's by an Australian company called ScrapFX and I've created a few little pages in here previously but the, page, the journal's really cool because it's full of tags and dictionary pages but it's also got these really lovely die cut elements, transparencies and all sorts of bits and pieces. So I am going to use, I'm going to use this page today. So first thing I need to do is prep it with gesso because I'm going to be using uh, the Lindy's on it and I'm going to be using Lindy's with water so I want to make sure that I've got a nice coat of gesso on my page first to seal it. Before I add my colour I want to add a little bit of collaging so I'm going to be using some gel medium to stick that down so I've got some chromical impasto gel it has a little bit of body to it and that's what I like clean it off but for the time being I want to stick a few little elements down the side. I've got um, a few little bits and pieces that I've left over from kits that I've done in the past. I've got some die cut cogs. got the professor and I have quite a big stamp of the professor and I'm going to pop him here. So what I want to do is I want to pop some colour on the background now and then I will add some stamping and I've got a few little collage elements that I might add on as well. So I'm going to make up a wash of a few different colours of Lindy's. Um, so I'm going to make up a palette of browns and uh, light, light earthy colours. So I have antique bronze here. So with my shakers I always give them a fluff up first, give them a good shake before I pop a little into here or, or a lot as the case may be. Um, this one is the aged copper. Then I've got Bratwurst brown. 
So just a little tip, you'll notice on the top of mine here, I've got uh, a little white mark, that's the shaker side. So I can easily identify which side I want to use and I don't end up having any little mistakes like I did with that one there, where I popped way too much powder in. So this is Grab A Guy Gold. And then I've got some Black Forest Black here as well. So six colors from the shakers. And then I also have floating around here somewhere, a little bit of Sandra D Sepia. So I've included this one because it is a flat magical and it is a lovely, lovely brown. So I'm gonna pop that in there. And then I wanna add some highlight colors. So from the Mountain Meadows, I'm going to add Evergreen Emerald and Stormy Sky. So I love that these are the flat magicals as well. So I can get some really lovely depth of color with these. which is just off camera here and then tip in a little water to activate those magicals and give it a little stir and swatch my colours first of all so that I know what I am working on. work with um, I'm super happy with them I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the antique gold into this side here to make this color a little bit more intense or a lot more as the case may be give that another stir yeah that works for me all right what I'm gonna do is start laying down some color and I'm gonna start with probably by lighter colours, so I'm just going to work in here and start getting some, puddling the colour onto the page, like so. So I'm just going to be mixing some of those colours up together, but using my heat tool to dry it off as I go. So I'm being very loose with the colour, which means that I am wanting a, a really soft sort of look, um, but I'm also being aware of the different papers that I've got here, and they are all taking on the colour differently, so you need to be quite quick and quite concise and make sure that straight away you know exactly what's soaking into what, where the colours are working together. Um, so here where I've just popped that green on, I can see that it's soaking right into that paper and it's drying quite quickly. So I'm spreading it out with my paintbrush to make sure that it's all blended in beautifully.
is dispersing the colour and having a nice big brush is certainly going to help as well. So this is a what's called a round brush and this is a size uh, possibly size 16 I think. done in black archival ink because the black archival ink of course is not going to run if I decide to add some more colour to this in a moment. So I have had a, a nice little shop up on some Stampers Anonymous stamps last week so I want to give this a, a nice juicy stamp and pop some around the And I'm happy for, I'm wanting a partial sort of stamp. I'm not too phased about not having the whole stamped image because it's not the focus of the page. It's not the focal point. It's going to be the, uh, it, we were so you can see, get a bit of an idea on how it's looking so far. And keeping in mind down in this section here is where my big stamped professor is going to go. Um, so let's look at a couple of other things I can do to the background. Um, I also have some Making Memories alphabets. Everybody remember those? Um, I've had them for, as you can tell, a very, very long time. And what I thought I might do is add a few to um, the background. No rhyme or reason to it, no particular words, no particular letters. As you can see, I'm just randomly cutting um, letters and numbers. Um, since this page has got that letters and numbers theme to it so far. This is a massive, this is the, the large professor. So to give you a bit of an idea, um, this is on how big it is. There's my Tim Holtz scissors, so you can see that this is the big one. Um, I think that I would probably be playing with fire to stick that down direct onto my page. So instead, I'm gonna stamp on a piece of vellum. And so I then that out. way, if I stuff up, sorry, if I mess up my, my first, stamp then that's okay because I can grab another piece of vellum and do another one. nice to pick up the staple the stapler and it's actually got staples in it for a change. That never happens. 
So the staples become embellishments as well. So I'm very aware of where I am putting them. Um, I'm fine with putting them on his neck and across his shoulders, but I really don't want to place any in his head. Um, the next thing I might do is I'm gonna add a little bit of that tape uh, just under his hairline, just to make sure that he's stuck down there. And again, it's gonna be under the darkest bit, so then if any shows through, and you're really not going to see it. And then I've just got a bit of paper towel just to push that down so that my finger doesn't transfer any ink. What I am going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more stamping. Um, I'm going to, I've got this lovely little stamp here that says, don't judge me. Um, love it. So I'm going to pop a little bit around here and then add a few more splatters for depth and I think I'm done. So that's it for my little art journal page. Um, thanks for watching.